I'm Julia Lofton. I'm Associate Dean for Research for the School of Humanities. And I'll be talking about some of the programs that fall under my purview uh, a bit later in the program. Uh, I'm also involved in some of the 50th anniversary activities for the campus including homecoming last week and some other things coming up. So this is a very, very special time at UCI. And it's a time of growth and revisioning for our school. And I'm very, very excited to be part of George's vision and to be able to work with my fantastic colleague, Jim Herbert, on a bunch of projects. I've known Jim, actually, since graduate school. So even longer than I've known some of you, I've known Jim. A good four or five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> we won't even say when that was. Um, so anyway, I'm, you'll hear again from me a little bit later, but I just want to welcome you, and I want to then turn this over to Jim Herbert, who's going to say a few words and introduce our, our dean. Great. Um, Julius Heim uh, is uh, associate dean for research. I'm not going to use the microphone because I didn't never use a microphone. Um, uh, and I, my, my title is, I'm Associate Dean uh, for Curriculum and Student Services, which is Associate Dean of lots of stuff. Uh, it used to be done by two Associate Deans, one for undergraduate study and one for graduate study. I'm basically in charge of overseeing all the curriculum and enrollment issues in, in the school. Um, and I actually think it works very well. It was George's idea to combine the two positions because there's so many different ways in which interact, uh, undergraduate and graduate education interact. Um, but the uh, part of my title I take most seriously is the second part, the student services, because I'm the person to whom students can come if they have any problems or concerns. My door is always open to any student or any group of students who have a concern. Uh, my door is always open to any faculty member or any group of faculty who have a concern uh, or an interest. Uh, and finally, uh, my door is always open to you uh, in, as individuals or groups as, as you have ideas or interests about our curriculum um, here at the school. Um, and now, I, I, I'll also be saying a few more words later, but I want to introduce George. You, of course, all know George. Um, and you don't need to hear about his many academic or uh, administrative accomplishments. What, because you know all that already, right? Um, what you don't know is he's a, he's a blast to work with. Uh, you know, he's George and Julia, and you have a third associate dean, Andre Varminsky, who's currently not in town. Um, we really like each other a lot. We work well together. I have learned an enormous amount uh, uh, about from administration from, from George. And uh, it is an enormous uh, kind of a moment of excitement for all of us to see what George is doing with his new vision for the school. And I know that both Julia and I and Andre are very happy to be able to contribute to his efforts to realizing those goals. George? I'm here not necessarily to use the microphone, but to get out of the way <laughs> of the vision. But uh, thank you, Jim and Julia, and thank all of you for uh, coming here today and for your support for the School of Humanities here at UCI. Without your support, none of what I'm going to show you is possible or perhaps even um, dreamable. And uh, of course, 2015 is a particularly a significant year for us. It's the 50th anniversary, as we know, of the founding of uh, UCI, um, and that the School of Humanities is one of the founding schools at UCI. Well, there were originally only five schools. Now I believe there's 12. So, so we've grown a lot. Um, and uh, we've got everything from Pulitzer Prize winning alums to field establishing <laughs> research. And so I think we've made an indelible impact on the growth and progress of the university and our surrounding community. So let me paint you a little quick picture here. Uh, I know you're busy and I'm gonna make sure you get out on time because it's Monday morning and there's things to do. Uh, to um, give you a picture of where we are today in the humanities at UCI. So uh, some numbers. Uh, we have 1,700 students, 300 graduate, 400, uh, 1,400 undergrad. These are only the majors. We, of course, teach across the entire campus. Um, and our, our student diversity is quite interesting. We are 27% uh, Latino Chicano. Now, um, UC, as you may know, is very close to being the very first um, AAU institution <coughs> to become a Hispanic serving institution, the definition of which is 25% of the student body is Hispanic. 
Um, the School of Humanities is actually already there, <laughs> as in so many, I think we're a trend-setting school here at UCI. Um, and we have you know, a mix of um, students from very different backgrounds, uh, you know, 29% Asian Pacific Islander, 5% black, 8% international, 29% Caucasian, 1% Native American, which is pretty much, I think, a pretty good par for the course relative to our uh, competitive schools. Um, with 170 faculty members, we are the largest school at UCI in terms of the number of faculty we have. Um, and I think that, that shows us quality. And many of our programs, as you know, are in the top 20 or even top 10 uh, nationally. And uh, uh, also, um, it's, it's not here. We're the second largest school in terms of enrollments at UCI. Uh, <laughs> the largest one is social sciences, and they get away with that because um, they have large lectures with Scantron exams, and uh, that's a lot easier to pack them in that way than if you brought, ask students to write papers and do things like that. Um, nonetheless, our efforts pay off uh, with a recent ranking uh, you can look it up on a site called payscale.com, but we're ranked number five in the country for the salary potential of our alums. Uh, and that's only in terms of humanities. This is not uh, a campus-wide statistic. This is a school of humanities, and our competitors are Harvard, Colgate, uh, you know, those kind of schools. So um, we offer much more uh, value for the dollar um, because we're a public institution, we're not asking uh, parents of students to fork over fifty thousand or sixty thousand dollars a year to get that kind of, you know, up in life. We have the ability to do that with much less. I think it's a really interesting, interesting statistic, um, and we offer over twenty majors and many, many more uh, minors and new fields that we're developing. Some of our recent successes. Uh, Erica Hayasaki is professor of English and literary journalism. Uh, she um, taught a class on death. Um, and um, actually, uh, when she first proposed this, we said, no way. I mean, you know, <laughs> nobody wants this. And, but we'll try it and see what happens. And it turned out it was a huge success, very meaningful for students. Uh, it got picked up by the New York Times. And now NBC has optioned it uh, in terms of a TV pilot that they're actually in the process of making. Um, last year, a faculty of 170 received 45 prestigious awards. Uh, that's 25% of the faculty getting major Guggenheim, Pulitzer Prize, things of that nature. Um, that's an unparalleled statistic. <laughs> Undergraduate students, over 30, I mean, you know, top uh, in fellowships and awards graduate students over 40 awards. And last year, our faculty published over 20 books, which, again, is roughly 15% of the faculty. Now, um, if you write a book, it, you're really talking about, um, uh, let's say, a good six to eight year project, minimum. <laughs> so to have 15% of our faculty in any one year published that many books, uh, it tells you how productive we are. And since 2015, it's like now it's not even well, five and a half weeks old. We already have five books out. <laughs> so uh, I think that tells you the, the kind of faculty that we can uh, invest in and um, that um, pays off really well in terms of who we do. Student impact, lots of long quotations here um, that uh, are both from uh, current students and alums uh, in terms of the kind of experiences they had um, I might just point to the one in the bottom right-hand corner by Monica Luar, who uh, graduated in literary journalism, that this program gave me the skills and support network needed to succeed and become a better writer. And of course, now she's a professional writer. So I think that that shows the, the kind of trajectory that we can do. Um, and maybe the last quote on, on, in the right-hand corner by Alex Garcia, is a senior in art history at the moment. Being an art history major has afforded me all of these opportunities because the department is tight-knit and cohesive. Well, that's great. They're not fighting with each other, which is really important. Um, all of the professors know me by name. OK, that's key. Uh, and I've been able to work one-on-one -on -one with them. 
This is something that's unique to humanities majors and to art history majors specifically. Um, and, you know, I mentioned that because uh, there's a kind of growing trend in higher education uh, you know, to uh, encourage uh, undergraduates to have research opportunities and opportunity to work individually with faculty. We already do it. <laughs> this is something we do as part of our normal day-to-day -day procedure. And uh, as in so many other things with UC Irvine, we become a model for others to imitate. Some of our featured faculty, uh, I, I could go through many, many, but I'll, I just limit it to six. Uh, um, starting in the upper left-hand corner, Carrie Nolan is a professor of French, uh, awarded a Guggenheim Memorial Fellowship grant. These are really highly prestigious grants. Uh, in previous year, uh, of course, uh, Julia Lupton had a Guggenheim grant. And so the fact that we were getting an average one per year is <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, this is not the norm. Uh, and so really excited about that. Um, in the middle top, uh, Professor Maria Pantelia, who's professor and chair of the Department of Classics, director of the Tesaurus Linguae Grecae, which is the largest digital depository of all writing in Greek in the world. It's here at UCI. We own it. And, and, and so we are a worldwide resource for anyone who wants to study uh, Greek language, literature, uh, <coughs> or ancient society. Uh, so she received the Theodore Salutos Award recently from the American Hellenic Council, which is a, a very um, big, big deal as well. Now, Vicky Ruiz, who many of you know in the right-hand corner, of my predecessor dean, um, but uh, just because she stepped down from being dean doesn't mean she's slowing down <laughs> at all. Uh, on the contrary, she is now president-elect of the American Historical Association. The American Historical Association is the largest scholarly association in the United States. Um, and she is the first uh, Hispanic woman to be president of the AHA. Uh, it's an astounding feature. Um, she also got recently elected to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and uh, has also been listed now as an honoree for National Women's History Month, and there'll be a celebration of that in March. Uh, and we're also organizing a conference on her work February 20th, if you're interested. So. Um, as, as she tells me, there's life after being a dean. So, <laughs> so I take that seriously. Um, uh, Gugi Watyongo in the bottom left-hand corner is a distinguished professor of comparative literature, named a 2014 fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. Um, she, he won the 2014 Nicola Guillen Achievement Award for Philosophical Literature, an honorary degree from the University of Bayreuth in Germany. That's his 11th honorary degree. <laughs> um, and uh, he is also a strong, strong contender for the Nobel Prize. Um, and in fact, uh, uh, I know this because I was just sent a letter by the Nobel Prize Selection Committee asking if I would like to nominate someone, hint, hint. So, <laughs> uh, of course, I took advantage of that. Um, I think, you know, it, it's never clear, but I mean, he will certainly get it one of these years. It may not be this year, but it might. So, uh, we're very proud of, of Googie in many ways. Um, in the middle on the bottom, Linda Vo, who is Associate Professor of Asian American Studies, and she was just elected President of the Association for Asian American Studies. So, another scholarly organization that we now head and centered here at Irvine. And uh, finally, in the, um, well, actually, some of you may know Linda's work also with the Vietnamese American Oral History Project uh, that she has managed just brilliantly and her work on the annual uh, Vietnamese International Film Festival, um, which is not just a Vietnamese American film festival, it's all Vietnamese film around the world, and people come here from. France, Australia, everywhere for that. And finally, in the right-hand corner, Amy Willens, who's professor of English, who won the National Book Critics Circle Award for uh, autobiography for her book, Farewell, Fred Voodoo. Uh, National Book Critics Circle is also super, super, super prestigious. It's the kind of award that people like William Sarayan or John Steinbeck won. It's not trivial. It, 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 it may not be one that is a household word for you, but it is a very big deal. So we're very proud of our faculty, and this is just a selection. And uh, I know the, um, the, the chancellor uh, is, is very concerned about our level of diversity and inclusive excellence. If you just look at the, the faces, you see what a diverse faculty we are, uh, without even trying. I, I wasn't even thinking about it, just put, you know, who are our people who got some recent honors, and it, it tells you the kind of school uh, we are. In terms of our notable alum, 
Uh, so two of our alum uh, from the MFA program in creative writing had their books recommended uh, for CBS, LA's best books based in Orange County. One is Kem Nunn and the other is Michael Shabon, uh, who is kind of more of our best known graduate of our MFA program. Um, we also have David Benioff, who received his MFA in fiction here in 1999, renowned screenwriter, novelist, and producer. And uh, you may know him more likely for he's the co-creator of HBO's Game of Thrones. Uh, so that's what he does. Uh, so um, hoping we can lure him back here and maybe uh, chat with us about his success. Uh, on the right hand top, I have David Baker, who received the BA in English in 1975. He's now the director of the NFL Hall of Fame. Uh, and of course, if uh, you saw the recent Super Bowl, I mean, the <laughs> kind of infamous last play of that game, I'm sure he has much to say about that. And the bottom right hand corner, Taryn Rose, uh, who graduated BA in philosophy, 1989, currently CEO of the Black Rose Network, a highly coveted footwear brand. And by the way, she's actually an MD who's designed stylish footwear. So she's both a, in, a business person and a doctor, which is an interesting, you know, where do you find that except at UCI alums. <laughs> and in our uh, left-hand corner, Dennis Wen, who's the chair and co-founder of New Asia Partners, BA in Chinese Literature and Language 1994. And he's here in the audience today. Thank you, Dennis, for coming. We appreciate your, your support. Um, so what are we doing? What are some new things? Um, some emerging research and, and teaching trends. Uh, we are uh, starting a collaboration with Yale University and the University of Chicago as a rotating host for the English Institute. Uh, the English Institute is the uh, premier annual conference in English literature. It has traditionally always been housed at Harvard. Uh, and we stole them. <laughs> uh, so now it's um, one year Yale, one year Chicago, one year Irvine, revolving that way. Um, and it is the most prestigious venue um, for English studies uh, in America. Um, more locally, on the top right hand corner, the Humanities Academic Resources and Technology Studio, I like it to call it the Humanities Art Studio, uh, is um, actually just been redesigned of what was the Instructional Research Center. Uh, it's actually right across the way in Humanities Hall, one of the oldest buildings on campus, in a space that you may have known once upon a time as a student lounge, uh, once upon a time as a language lab. Um, it's still, language lab is still a kind of a computer lab, but it also has um, a fully displayed collection of over 80 historical maps, prints, and botanical illustrations dating from 1550 to 1830. Uh, those were a gift to the School of Humanities by uh, a Raider Galleries in New York, valued at $1 million, on the condition that it be available all the time for anyone who wants to look at it. It can't be locked up. <laughs> it can't be hidden away in the library in you know, secret archives. It has to be open. So, so that's why we combine with a student facility. They can view interesting artwork at the same time. Um, we have also done very interesting collaborations and innovative collaborations across campus. Uh, Medical Humanities Initiative um, is one of three new interschool academic initiatives that was selected out of a competitive pool of 30 proposals. The purpose is to address complex social cha challenges posed by advances in biomedicine and medical research. So that medicine remains a person-centered human enterprise at the service of the sick and vulnerable patient. Uh, it is co-directed by Douglas Haynes, who is associate professor of history, no, he's full professor of history, that's an incorrect note for me, vice provost for academic equity as well. Um, and this is a joint venture between School of Humanities, the School of Medicine, and the School of the Arts. Uh, so to work in this area, um, and that is moving well. But now that we have uh, medical humanities off the ground, we're working on a similar joint program between humanities and law. Um, and uh, working on a set of initiatives, uh, including joint PhD, JDs, um, uh, joint kind of uh, legal research centers and operations with the law school. I think those will be quite interesting. Um, in terms of other uh, developing programs, a program in global Middle East studies, uh, which is meant to be not only a study of the Middle East today, but the global diaspora that is connected with 
the Middle East, the Near East, and Central Asia, and kind of a very broad understanding of that. Um, we have an initiative in food studies that has been um, uh, announced by uh, Professor Chen in the Department of History, uh, which is looking at uh, both nutritional and cultural dimensions of food. He has a wonderful book, which I highly recommend, called Chop Sui. It's a history of Chinese food in America. And no, it's a fascinating book, uh, of which uh, one detail is that there are um, more Chinese restaurants in America than there are McDonald's, Taco Bell's, uh, Burger King's, et al. combined. Wow. You know, I mean, that, I mean that, that's the kind of research he did. And what does that mean in terms of the ability of um, uh, Americans to uh, learn about dining and the rest. Um, and, and finally, I'd like to um, invite Julia Lupton back and say a few words about Illuminations, which is a new program designed to expose students in all majors to artistic experience. It is sort of headed up by the chancellor, and even though she's already a professor of English, and she's already doing a lot of work as uh, my associate dean for research, she got tapped by the chancellor for this. If you want to say a few words about it. Sure. Yeah, well, just really a couple of weeks after I stepped into the associate dean's <laughs> office, I had an a email from Michael Clark, our interim provost, uh, wanting to meet with me about something that he had been thinking about with Georges over the summer and with uh, some other people on campus. And uh, the program is really geared at bringing arts and culture to undergraduates regardless of major. And so we're working really hard on seating programs, exhibitions, performances uh, that get the science students and the social scientists and the engineering students to, to appreciate the role of art in their cognitive, emotional, civic development. So we've got a lot of great stuff going on. Uh, we have uh, important speakers coming through the improv uh, festival that will be held here in, Mar in um, I guess, in May. Uh, we're doing stuff that has a medical humanities dimension, uh, using improv and dramatic techniques to work with health science students on interpersonal communications. Uh, we have an exhibition on art and medical photography. Just lots and lots of great stuff. We're going to do pop-up Shakespeare in which we'll have Shakespeare scenes performed in different parts of the campus so that students over, you know, at the Student Center and in engineering will get to see some Shakespeare performed for them and we'll be kind of photographing that and interviewing them. Uh, interactive stuff with technology, dance, and music that will have a social media uh, component. And we're really pleased that Illuminations has been chosen as the theme for the Chancellor's Investiture on March 31st. So we're actually, George and I are working on a project with the drama department that will feature uh, sort of inspiring uh, messages about illumination as an artistic and scientific idea. And we're really happy to be able to welcome the new chancellor into his position using illuminations as a platform. So. Check out our website, it's illuminations.uci.edu. There's a lot of great programming that I'm working on for this year and next year for our undergraduate students and the community. Thank you, Julia. So our, our reach extends beyond what the school does to the entire campus and beyond. I mean, I think that's an important lesson. We don't view ourselves as like, like a siloed little operation that I, I, my vision is that we're the, we're the hub and center of the campus so we can connect with any other school and our position is actually to facilitate those kind of things. I mean, to give you some sense of that, we also are writing lots of interesting collaborative and emerging research and teaching, uh, including um, the Humanities Core Course, which both I lecture in and, and uh, Associate Dean <laughs> Herbert lectures in, um, and a couple of new initiatives I'd actually make, like to have uh, Jim come up and say a few words about those. Also, Julia was director of Hunkor for, for many right. years yeah. and, and lectured and lectured and lectured and was one of the favorite, <laughs> favorite speakers of, of folks. We're, we, we've started two new um, uh, initiatives uh, at the curricular level. One we're calling the 4 plus 1 program <laughs> and the other one is 5 plus 2. So we're going to rename ourselves as the <laughs> School of Mathematics. <laughs> um, 4 plus 1 program refers to four-year BA plus one-year master's degree. 
And it's not actually as if they finish their BA in four years and then take a master's degree. It's that there's a certain amount of overlap in their fourth year. The idea is that students who really want to get more than just a BA and may want to go on for further study, or even, you know, just they have, as they say, you know, that. 70s is the new 50s, and the, B, the MA is the new BA. It's expected a lot from a lot of jobs. But there's another reason that we wanted to make this available, is that a lot of people in the humanities come to their major late because they arrive with some parental expectations that they can do engineering or science, and they discover they really love the humanities, and then they have to kind of fit it in too quickly. Or oh, we get a lot of transfer students, and this is the chance for them to spend more time at UCI studying what they want to study. Five plus two refers to PhD programs, and this year we're piloting two in two uh, PhD programs, in philosophy <coughs> and in visual studies, a new program whereby they complete their degree in five years, their PhD in five years, and if they do that, we give them a two-year appointment as an adjunct assistant professor teaching within the school. And this both is to kind of shorten down the degree process so that they don't end up languishing you know, that we fund, we, fund every, we fund every year that they're going to be here, rather than funding them for five years and then just cutting them loose. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that our, our records show that most people who get jobs don't get them in the first year, they get them sometime in the first three years. So they can have either a CV which says, got my PhD in 2015, and then, you know, Starbucks, and then, you know, or, or they can have something that says, got my degree two years in the ad adjunct assistant professor. And so this is really meant to try to make our degrees much more connected with the realities of the current job market for PhDs. Yes. No, I, I think these are both innovative programs, and precisely because we've reconstructed our administrative positions so that we don't separate undergraduate and graduate studies. We can think a little bit more out of the box in terms of programs that I think are really needed for students today, whether they are uh, BAs who would like one extra year and could walk off with an MA, which is, is incredible for an undergraduate tuition rate, mm -hmm. or uh, helping a demonstrably doable PhD with support so that, because people won't hire a PhD who doesn't complete it. And so many of our PhDs hang around hoping for something. If we give them this option, we know that 40% of them get a tenure track job, which is unbelievable, tenure track research job at a university within three years. 80% actually get full-time employment within three years. I mean, uh, and I, 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 I defy any of the major schools to show me a record that's better than that. I mean, that's you know, an amazing statistic. But um, let me say uh, some of the things that we're doing. Some of you may have seen, we've, we've launched a new and exclusive webinar series called Humanities Headlines, which showcases not only the depth of our outstanding faculty, but gives viewers instant insight in today's most topical issues. So I really show kind of things that we have expertise that can help you understand things that are happening in the world uh, today. Our latest video was just launched yesterday, um, which features Professor Jack Miles, who's Distinguished Professor of English and Religious Studies, who just published the uh, Norton Anthology of World Religions, uh, which has been reviewed in the New York Times and the London Review of Books and the Times Literary. I mean, it's, it's, it is actually a blockbuster uh, two-volume work that has definitive uh, uh, collection of primary texts in the six major languages, uh, religions in the world, I mean, Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, uh, Christianity in all its forms, Judaism, and Islam. I mean, and uh, it's, it's amazing. The Sikhism. Hmm? The Sikhism. Yeah, we got, it, it's got that one too. Yeah, yeah. There so, it is. Right yeah. The yeah. yeah, there it is. So uh, he has really um, done incredible service and uh, to have created this comprehensive volume. And he's actually given a talk on um, religion between global warming and religion, which is not a topic you'd think about. Um, uh, but uh, I would invite you to watch it and see what he has to say. It's quite interesting. Uh, and some of you may have seen our other webinars, uh, Susan Morrissey on Russia and the Ukraine crisis, uh, Jeff Wasserstrom on the protests in uh, Hong Kong, uh, Steve Topic, who uh, has a wonderful talk on coffee, yes, and you know, think twice about your coffee, uh, where it comes from, and Anita Casavantes Bradford, also in history, on the whole uh, unaccompanied minors immigration issue. Uh, I think these are very thoughtful uh, discussions. They're, they're not meant to be news bites. They're meant to provide um, 
our uh, supporters and alums and friends an opportunity to have some insight from uh, the kind of uh, you know ex expert knowledge that we actually have here and cultivate in the university. So, um, some of our um, interesting things that are happening now, uh, thanks to a pledge of financial support from Farhang Foundation, uh, which is a non-religious, non-political, not-for-profit entity to promote Iranian art and culture. We are now developing a minor in Persian studies. Uh, in fact, it just cleared two weeks ago the executive committee. <laughs> so I'm waiting for the final approval. And I want to thank uh, Asad Hazamini, who is here in the audience, for his help in making this possible for a very large gift. Uh, we also just recently signed a memorandum of understanding, the first one, uh, with the American University of Armenia to create faculty, student, and research exchange between all schools on the UC Irvine campus. AUA is actually a U.S. accredited institution of higher learning, which is affiliated with the University of California and providing a global education in Armenia. Uh, and so we are um, working um, with the president of that university to establish partnerships that will have incredible value, not only for Armenian studies program, but for uh, the entire campus. And in fact, um, we have a recruiter from there coming next week to uh, help students who want to spend time in um, Armenia. Um, and I know it's not up here, but we're also working, um, again, thank you to Dennis on a uh, even more exciting project uh, in Vietnam uh, that will be has some similarities. Um, I want to mention down in the left-hand corner, uh, Professor Armin Schwegler in the Spanish department opened the doors to La Casa Nuestra, which is a residential language learning program for Spanish that brings together native-speaking international students, local heritage speakers, and novice language learners all under one roof. Um, and I went, I had dinner with them uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's an amazing, amazing uh, set of uh, uh, com community they've established. It's so successful, we're going to have to have a second house next year. The demand is great. And this has become not only um, a place to learn Spanish, which was actually my idea, was to kind of get residence houses so that you can learn languages, not just only in the classroom, which isn't enough time, but in a residence environment. But it has sort of become a cultural center for our uh, Chicano Latino students on campus, which is very meaningful in terms of uh, our relationships with that community. Um, we also, in the upper right-hand corner, just recently uh, closed a gift with the Dharma Civilization Fund to establish the Thakur Family Endowed Chair in Indian Religions and Civilization. Uh, and uh, we are uh, working with them on further chairs and support in Indian relation. And uh, I know Dr. Sahota is here, and we appreciate his help in this area, too. Thank you. Um, and then I do absolutely want to um, acknowledge uh, uh, Vahe and Armin Mehruni, who are the benefactors of the lecture series in Armenian studies they've been doing now and have now generously pledged a million dollars to create an endowed chair in Armenian studies, uh, which we are uh, working to close and hire in the next year. So I want to thank Vahe and Armin as well. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I, might, I might add the partnership we just established with the American University of Armenia is only made possible because we have this gift in hand. And I thank you again. Um, these, these things, though, your support goes a long way towards the kind of things we can do, and they open up other doors and possibilities uh, for us. Um, looking ahead, um, the, we've uh, combined all our research centers into what we call the Humanities Commons right across the way. Here, so it becomes an active part of campus. Um, but I want to again invite uh, Julia to come up again, <laughs> say a few words about this operation, which I think is really exciting, and some other things that we're doing with it. Thanks, George. I just I learned so much today about the school, and I'm just <laughs> really just like powered now, <laughs> as if I wasn't before I got here, um, to hear about the amazing things that our partners in the community are doing to really bring us into a whole new level of um, diversity and global awareness and depth of uh, engagement with so many topics. 
And the Commons is all about that. Um, we are a humanities center for the School of Humanities. Uh, we organize uh, research clusters. We provide administrative support for Persian studies and some of the other centers uh, in the school. We are working behind the scenes all day, every day, trying to help faculty win those competitive awards, those scholarships and fellowships, and also to try to get uh, faculty support to publish those books that we saw celebrated in one of the early slides. So we are really, our main mission is to support the research of faculty uh, through a, a range of different techniques and means. And it's, I'm really, really happy to be part of that vision um, that Georges has set for us and for the school. Uh, we also are involved with public engagement and outreach, and um, we, Levon is here, who was involved in Humanities Out There at the very beginning, and Humanities Out There is coming back next year in, in a new form. I'm really excited about that. Uh, we're going to be partnering with the Bowers Museum with their after-school program, working with kids in the neighborhood around the Bowers on tutoring and will be in a museum environment at the Kidsium there, which has just been redesigned. So this is gonna offer an extraordinary opportunity for our undergraduate humanities majors to do really engaged, culturally sensitive and culturally situated tutoring uh, for kids who will benefit from the one-on-one -on -one work with our amazing undergraduates. And we're also hoping to have a Humanities Out There fellow who will be a graduate student who will work with me and with the undergraduates providing support here at UCI in pedagogy and in uh, sort of theories of engaged education and civic engagement. And we'll have as part of that fellowship, if we can figure out the finances of that, um, some additional opportunities for professional development in the area of civic engagement. So I'm really, really happy that Humanities Out There has come back to mama. <laughs> <laughs> and that I will get to be involved again in that important work for our school and our community. Uh, new Swan Shakespeare Festival, everyone I talked to today is like, how's the New Swan doing? <laughs> it's doing great. <laughs> and we're gonna have an extraordinary summer of programming, uh, Macbeth, and Much Ado About Nothing are the plays. We will have seminars and talkbacks and other kinds of opportunities before most of the performances. Uh, Illuminations will partner with the New Swan, and there'll be a Macbeth night for our undergraduates who will get to attend a production and have special I don't know, Macbeth selfies or <laughs> I don't, whatever the young people do these days. We'll, we'll be there first and provide it. Uh, so I'm really excited to have the synergy between the New Swan, which is really now a very intense partnership with the, with the Department of Drama and Illuminations and the Commons. And also to have Humanities out there, um, gonna be really out there again next year in a big way. So I'm really happy. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Again, uh, looking ahead real quickly, um, uh, some things that are happening. Ruth Kluger, some of you may know her, she's a professor emerita of German, will be awarded an honorary doctor at the University of Vienna this spring um, for uh, her uh, amazing work, particularly also a well-known autobiography on the Holocaust, which is actually a book we read in Humanities Core. Um, and so some of you may know her. Uh, I mentioned already about uh, Vicky Ruiz and uh, her achievements will be honored the National Women's History Project on March 28th at the Autry National Center in Los Angeles, if you want to put that down in your calendar. And I said we'll also honor her contributions, a conference called Nuestra America, Rethinking Fronteras in U.S. History on Friday, February 20th, here on campus, in this very room. Um, other things, renowned feminist scholar Judith Butler will be giving our annual Michael and Stacy Kuhn lecture, put on by the Critical Theory Emphasis. Uh, we are hosting an Armenian Studies Conference, bringing top scholars in the field uh, in the US and Armenia for two days called Armenian Identity Through the Ages, April 2nd through 4th, and that's also uh, with an eye to commemorating uh, the sad legacy of the Armenian Genocide, which is now 100 years old. 
Um, and uh, that conference will be uh, organized and edited into a volume by um, Professor Turaj Darye. Uh, our Art History Undergraduate Association will be putting on its third annual art show, which is a two-day event beginning Thursday, April 16th. Uh, the theme is Altered Perceptions and Focus on the Relationship Between Art and the Sciences. Our uh, author series continues, bringing renowned alums from our MBA program to campus reading from their latest novels. Uh, we'll be hosting Matt Summel April 16th and Matthew Thomas on May 14th. Uh, in April, uh, we'll also be working on a uh, commemoration for the 40th anniversary of the fall of Saigon. Um, many um, anniversaries and commemorations, not necessarily happy ones, but important ones to know. Um, the uh, Wellick Lecture Series will continue this year with uh, Professor Sam Wemmer, who is from the European Graduate School and also Avalon Foundation Professor of Humanities at Northwestern University. Um, and that will be followed by a Critical Theory Institute conference on, is theory critical? I think it's time we actually ask that question, <laughs> and uh, in, a, in a serious way. Um, uh, there'll be, um, uh, two more Dean Salons in the spring, um, one of which is designed to be another, like we had last year, very successful uh, backstage uh, visit to the Swan Shakespeare. Is that, that still happening? Yeah. Good. Okay. I'm, we're, we, you heard the confirmation. That will happen. Um, and then um, looking ahead in uh, next year, 50th anniversary symposium uh, that we set up on a collaboration with the Humanities and Arts on the theme of creativity cognition and critique, and uh, I was just delighted that th this morning at 6 a.m. I got an acknowledgement from our keynote speaker agreeing to do that. That's uh, Professor Catherine Hales, who is probably the world expert on electronic literature and digital humanities, and so will be a very interesting, engaging speaker. <laughs> so um, please stay in touch. and. Um, uh, we'll keep you updated on our developments. I mean, just as a sampling to try to keep us on time here today. Um, but um, an example of our artwork in the Humanities Studio. This is a 1585 watercolor by Jacques Lemoine de Morgue, a refugee French Huguenot artist who later became uh, Philip Sidney's gardener <laughs> and invented floral art as a result of that. Um, so it goes with the Shakespearean kind of theme. Um, <laughs> So um, it, uh, we have a little bit of time, I believe, if you want to ask questions of any of us or make suggestions or comments. It just uh, We always love to hear from you in any way that you can. Uh, uh, actually, I thank you. This, one, this, is what make, what, this is what you're making possible. <laughs>